catalytic converter can get clogged up. Cylinder misfires. Certain sensors go bad. What I think is the most common reason for lack of power under acceleration. Hey guys, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. Today I want to talk about the issue of lack of power under acceleration. So when you're taking off from the stop sign, pedal to the metal, your car just doesn't want to go. So there's a lot of reasons this can happen, and I'm going to get to the bottom of why it's happening to you. Before we get going, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Now there's a ton of reasons why a car might lose power under acceleration. Some of them are easier because they're accompanied by other symptoms like a check engine light or a sight or a smell or a sound, but others are a lot harder to figure out. In this video, we're gonna go over all of them. The first ones I wanna go over are the ones that are easier to diagnose. I say easier because they usually throw a check engine light, meaning the check engine light comes on your dash, you can plug a code reader into your car and it tells you what's going on. It doesn't get easier than that. Now, as I've said before, if you don't have access to a code reader, a lot of auto parts stores will offer free code reading. Now, one of the main reasons for losing power in your engine is cylinder misfires. So you've got four, six or eight cylinders in your engine. When one of them stops firing, you're losing power. The great thing about misfires is they usually throw a check engine light that will tell you which cylinder is misfiring so that you can diagnose what's going on with that cylinder. A lot of reasons that a cylinder will misfire, won't get into all of them, but we have a great video on how to diagnose misfires. We'll put a link to that video above. So just as a side note, when you have a misfire, you'll kind of also know because your engine will be running rough. It'll be kind of chunky. When you go to accelerate, it'll be shaky because the engine's running kind of off balance. So another reason for loss of power is lack of cylinder compression. So basically your rings have gone bad or you have a, a head gasket leak. And so you don't have the compression in the cylinder to create power. So sometimes if it's not bad enough, it won't trigger a check engine light, but you'll get things like extra smoke coming out your exhaust pipe, oil in your coolant if you have a head gasket leak. If the compression gets too bad, it will often result in a misfire, which again will give you that check engine light. Now to check your compression, you're gonna need a compression tester. And remember, you can get one of those for free at a local auto parts store that has like a tool rental program. Another thing that can happen is your catalytic converter can get clogged up and restrict the flow of exhaust. So your car can't produce the power because it can't get the exhaust out. So when the catalytic converter gets clogged up, it'll usually throw a check engine light code via the oxygen sensors that are in front and behind the catalytic converter. And those oxygen sensors are another thing that can cause your car to run improperly. When they go bad, they give false information to the computer and your fuel error ratio gets all mixed up. But again, they're throwing check engine light codes that your code reader will tell you are associated with the cat or the oxygen sensors. Other symptoms you might experience with a bad catalytic converter would be like a sulfuric smell in the cab or the smell of exhaust fumes because you're getting backed up and passing right up into the cab. Additionally, you can get like oily, greasy residue inside the tailpipe. So one final note, when you're diagnosing engine codes from O2 sensors and catalytic converters, they can be a little misleading because they're so closely related. So the best way to do it is with a good scanner that will tell you live information while the car is running and you can more accurately diagnose a catalytic converter. Now, thankfully, most of the engine codes you're gonna get that are related to power issues like this are gonna be pretty specific and really help you dial in what your issue is. Now, sometimes you're gonna get a generic code like a P0171 or 0174, and those are gonna be broad and related to like air fuel mixture, and they're gonna be a little bit harder to diagnose. So my suggestion is if you get one of those that are related to like a lean mixture, start looking at hoses for cracks or uh, disconnections and really go after like air lines, vacuum lines, that kind of thing first. So another reason that an engine can lose power and perform poorly is when certain sensors go bad. Specifically, I'm talking about things like the crankshaft position sensor, the camshaft position sensor, and the throttle position sensor. And these update the computer to help the computer run the engine efficiently. And when they give bad information, the engine runs poorly. Now, each of these sensors will throw their own specific engine code when they go bad. Though I will say, I've seen sensors that were on their way out that weren't bad enough to trigger a check engine light yet. So you'll just wanna be aware of that. One little trick that I've learned to double check if the sensor is really going bad is you can temporarily unplug it and see how the car runs. If it runs the same, you might think that sensor is failing and the car doesn't even recognize that it's unplugged. Now, if you you pull the plug on a sensor and the engine performance changes a lot, probably means that sensor was working fine and doesn't need to be replaced. Okay, those were the easy ones. We had a check engine light helping us. Now we're gonna get into the tough ones. So these issues do sometimes throw a check engine light, don't throw them into the bus, but often they don't throw a check engine light when there's power delivery problems, and then it's really hard to diagnose, and that's what we're gonna get into now. 
So the first issue I want to talk about and what I think is the most common reason for lack of power under acceleration is a failing fuel pump. So fuel pump, obviously you need it to get the gas from your tank to your engine. And when it starts to fail, it can run the car at idle and going slow speeds, but it can't keep up with the demands of a sudden acceleration. And this is one of those that won't throw a check engine light and you really won't hear or see or smell anything when it starts to fail. So the fuel pump is located different places on different vehicles. Most common are in the actual fuel tank, which is a pain in the butt or they can also be located on the top of the fuel tank, but accessible under like a back seat, which is really nice. Now, in order to check if it's the fuel pump that's the problem, you're gonna need a fuel pressure test kit. And again, those can be found at a local auto parts store that has that tool rental program. So the next issue is a clogged fuel filter or damaged or obstructed fuel lines. So it's the same effect as the bad fuel pump is a not enough fuel can reach the engine to handle big accelerations. And again, probably no check engine light, but if you do have a leak somewhere, you might smell it. Other than that, you're not gonna know. Again, this would be diagnosed and tested using a fuel pressure test kit. Now obstructions or damage can kind of happen anywhere in the fuel system, but most commonly it's gonna be that clogged fuel filter. And those can either be in the tank built into the fuel pump, or they can be under the car or under the hood somewhere as a like a canister that you can replace. So the next one's pretty common, also really easy to check yourself, and that is a clogged air filter. And this isn't really gonna directly throw a check engine light on its own, although it may mess with your mass airflow sensor, more on that later. But really all you would notice is that, that power problem at acceleration and maybe some reduced gas mileage. So obviously the diagnostic and uh, repair for that is to open the big box up, look if it's dirty, if it's dirty, replace it. The next thing right next door to the air filter is your mass air flow sensor or your MAF. This does have a check engine light code that it can throw, but often it will start affecting engine performance before it throws the code. It's basically a sensor that senses how much oxygen is getting into the engine at the beginning and it tells the computer how much fuel to add into the mixture. If it fails, then the computer gets all confused and it doesn't provide enough fuel for the engine to accelerate properly. You can't really see when they're failed you can't really physically check unless they're really dirty, but you can get a cleaner, a mass airflow cleaner, and you can take your air hose off, spray that thing down, and hopefully it takes care of your problem. Another trick, just like we did with the other sensors under the hood, you can temporarily unplug the MAF and see how the engine runs with it unplugged. With an automatic transmission, sometimes you'll get a check engine code, but often you won't, and you'll still get stuff like pressing on the accelerator, something goes wrong inside that transmission, and the car doesn't move forward like it's supposed to. Similar thing happens on a manual transmission car, when your clutch starts going out. You hit that accelerator, you let the clutch out, but instead of taking off like a rocket, the clutch is slipping and your car's not moving as fast as it should. In both of those cases, your RPM are generally raised, so it sounds like the engine's revving, but you're not going as fast as you should. So that's kind of one audible symptom of that slippage. Final thing. If your car sits for a really long time and the gas goes bad in the fuel tank, or you got some water in there or something, bad fuel will cause your engine to perform improperly and can often allow the engine to run, but when you step on that accelerator, it won't give you that acceleration. If you suspect this is the issue, you're gonna wanna replace that fuel right away because bad fuel in your tank can also compromise other elements of your fuel system and make the problem worse. So that's a lot of stuff. But if it was me diagnosing the car, I would start with anything that's thrown a check engine light, figure out what that is. If there's no light, I'd go for the easy things, air filter, mass airflow sensor, get into the fuel system a little bit, and then move on to the more difficult things from there. So I hope this video is helpful. Thank you for watching. And as always, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any content in the future.